Hello everyone. In the last video, we had studied about Oersted experiment. And in Oersted experiment, we had seen that the magnetic field due to some current carrying conductor depends on various factors. The magnetic field on a particular point depends on the location of the point from that conductor and it also depends on the direction of current. So in this video, we will try to find out the magnetic field due to some symmetric current carrying conductors. These are the conductors which we use very frequently so we should know the magnetic field produced by these conductors. A first conductor is a straight wire. Now we have to find the magnetic field around this wire and we had connected it to a battery so as to flow the current. So now we know that how to find the magnetic field in this conductor. We had studied about right hand thumb rule which says that if we have to find the magnetic field at any point of the conductor then we have to hold the conductor in such a way that the thumb points in the direction of current then the curling of fingers will give you the direction of magnetic field. Now if we look at this conductor the current will be flowing in upward direction when we switch on the battery. So let's hold it in our right hand. So our thumb will point in upward direction and if we curl the fingers you will find out that the magnetic field will be in circular in shape. You will find that there will be some concentric circles formed around this wire and the direction of these circles is given by curling of the fingers. So its direction can be find out easily by using right hand thumb rule. Now the strength of this magnetic field also depend on some factors. If we increase the amount of current through this conductor, the magnetic field increases. And we had seen in Oersted experiment also that if we move away from it, the wire, the strength of magnetic field decreases. So we can say that the strength of magnetic field due to this straight current carrying conductor depends on two factors. First is it depends directly on the current in the wire and secondly it depends on the distance of the point from the conductor. It decreases as the distance increases. So we will say that it is inversely proportional to the distance of the point from the wire. A second conductor is the circular coil. Now we have to find the magnetic field due to this circular coil. So let's first zoom this circular coil and let's zoom that particular portion of this coil. Now if we zoom that particular portion you will find out that this small portion when we zoom in looks like a straight conductor and we know how to find the magnetic field around a straight current carrying conductor that we can apply right hand thumb rule and get the magnetic field around this conductor. So if we look at that straight portion and apply right hand thumb rule, you will find out that again you will get concentric circles around that particular portion. So now let's zoom it out and we'll find out that around this whole circular coil you will get some concentric circles. So if we have to find the magnetic field due to this circular coil, we have to draw a plane passing through the point at which we have to calculate the magnetic field. So let's assume that the point is this. So we'll draw a plane passing through this point. And now we can easily apply right hand thumb rule and find the direction of magnetic field at that particular point. Now let's find out the direction of magnetic field from the left arm first. So in the left arm current is flowing in upward direction. So I will hold my right hand in such a way that my thumb is pointing in upward direction. Now if I curl the fingers you will find out that the magnetic field will come towards you. Let's try to find out the magnetic field due to the right arm. Now in the right arm current is flowing in 
downward direction. So a thumb will point in downward direction. Now if I try to find the magnetic field at that point, you will find out that it is again coming outwards. So we can say that due to a circular coil, the magnetic field is in circles and the direction of the rotation of those circles can be easily found out by using right hand thumb rule. And if we look at the center of the coil, the magnetic field is in straight lines. So the magnetic field lines due to this circular coil look something like this. So you have to remember this that how does the magnetic field due to a circular coil looks like. Now the strength of magnetic field again depends on the current in the coil and the distance of the point from the coil. So it depends on two things. Now let's think that I take a very long wire and instead of making a single circular turn, I start making multiple circular turns. One turn, two turn, three turn, four turn and so on. So what will happen? You'll find out that the magnetic field due to one circular coil will add up to the magnetic field of the second circular coil to the third circular coil and hence all the magnetic field due to different circular coils will add up to form a very strong magnetic field and the arrangement which we get is known as a solenoid. So a third and last part of conductor study is solenoid. Now we have to find the magnetic field of this solenoid. Now you might have seen big cranes attracting very big pieces of iron. Those big cranes have something attached to their front part which is nothing but an electromagnet. The electromagnet works whenever current is switched on into that. As the current is switched on it gets magnetized and magnetic field is produced around it and as the current switched off then it gets demagnetized and the magnetic field disappears. So this electromagnet is nothing but a solenoid and it is made in the same way as we had constructed the solenoid. We take a soft iron rod and start wounding the wire across this. Now with each turn a circular coil is being added to this iron rod and with each circular turn being added the magnetic field also adds. So hence in the end we get a very strong magnetic field produced by this solenoid. Now the magnetic field lines of a solenoid are similar to the bar magnet. One side of the solenoid acts as a north pole and the other side acts as the south pole. Now we have to find out that which side acts as the north pole and which side acts as the south pole. We have to find some way out to find out that which is south and which is north. So it is very easy to find out. We have a very easy method. To find out we just have to take a right hand again and hold the solenoid in such a way that your fingers curls in the direction of electric current. So we'll find out that the current is flowing this way. So you have to take your fingers and hold the conductor in such a way that your fingers curl the electric current. So we'll hold the conductor in this form. Since our fingers are curling in the direction of electric current. So the thumb will give you the direction of north pole. So that pole will be the north and this pole will be the south pole. Just have to hold the conductor in your right hand, your fingers pointing in the direction of electric current, then thumb will point the direction of north pole. So that will be north and this will be the south. So a magnetic field lines emerges from the north pole and they end at the south pole. So the magnetic field lines due to this solenoid will be something like this. Just like the magnetic field of the straight conductor, the circular coil depends on the amount of current flowing through them. The magnetic 
field of the solenoid also depends on the amount of current flowing through the solenoid. More is the current, more is the magnetic field. Next thing which the magnetic field depends on is the amount of turn we are using in the solenoid. More is the number of turns of the coil, more is the magnetic field. So we can summarize that the magnetic field of the straight conductor conductor is something like this then of the circular coil is something like this and of the solenoid is something like this and the amount of magnetic field or the strength of magnetic field depends on the amount of current flowing through the conductor and the direction of point or the location of point from the conductor.